So Yellowstone has a tremendous amount of water. We focused last week on Yellowstone Lake. Uh, I talked briefly about how there isn't much archaeology at Hart and Shoshone Lakes compared to Yellowstone Lake, where we have over 300 sites around the shores of the lake. Um, there's just so many rivers and creeks in Yellowstone that it's uh, uh, provided a really great opportunity for hunter-gatherers to come to a place that has reliable sources of water. So uh, if hunter-gatherers ever were experiencing, say, drought or dry conditions, for example, during the early Archaic period from about 8,000 to 5,000 years ago, places like Yellowstone were super important uh, where we had just um, rivers all over the park and all over the greater Yellowstone ecosystem, and they're, they're listed here. Um, there's been a lot of archaeological surveys on rivers, so uh, not only were hunter-gatherers of Yellowstone using the rivers, the archaeologists today, that's one of the primary places we look to find archaeological sites, right? So there's been a lot of major archaeological surveys of Yellowstone's rivers. The uh, earliest projects in the 1950s by Montana State University, now University of Montana, were done along the Yellowstone and Shoshone rivers. I'll talk about a couple of the important sites in the next slide. In the 1990s, we have a company called Lifeways of Canada, operated by Brian Reeves, uh, as well as the Wyoming State Archaeology Office, abbreviated as uh, AUSA, studied the Yellowstone River from uh, Yellowstone Lake all the way up to Gardner. In the 2000s, uh, we at the University of Monsta Montana studied the Yellowstone River from about Gardner northward to the edge of the park. Um, in the 2010s, we studied uh, really intensively Clear Creek, which is a tributary that flows into the Yellowstone Lake. Um, in the 2010s, we studied the Snake River and the Lewis River, which I'll talk about at the end of today's lecture. And in the 2010s, uh, toward uh, the 2020s, uh, University of Montana has studied the Madison River, the Gibbon River, and the Firehole River. So I would say, you know, one of the most intensively studied places in Yellowstone certainly was Yellowstone Lake. Uh, but a secondary secondary focus of uh, archaeological research in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem and Yellowstone National Park has been uh, focused on rivers. Um, this map gives you an overview. I posted this um, online as well, and this gives you an idea as to um, uh, the major archaeological sites and uh, major rivers that are important. I've posted this as a PDF for you. Uh, certainly, uh, I'm going to talk about several of these sites here in, in this lecture today, but this map is posted as a PDF for you on Moodle. Um, so one of the important things that we talked about in the Yellowstone Lake lecture was the role of fishing. And I think what at least the University of Montana research has showed is that fishing doesn't seem to have been very important for hunter-gatherers at Yellowstone Lake, probably because of the heightened uh, amount of hunted and gathered resources. So there's lots of animals to be hunted, there's lots of uh, plants to be gathered. So it just seems like um, fishing was not a priority. Um, we also talked about how we're not exactly sure when fish actually got to Yellowstone Lake. And so maybe fish weren't available as abundantly as they are today, um, that native cutthroat trout. But uh, that doesn't mean that a lot of a lot of students and a lot of people want to give lectures about Yellowstone Lake and say, yeah, Native Americans weren't fishing that much at Yellowstone Lake. Uh, that doesn't mean that Native Americans weren't fishing in, in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. So there's two archaeological sites, at least, that show evidence of Native American fishing in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. Uh, one site is in Yellowstone National Park. That's the famous Malin Creek site up, uh, excavated by Ann Johnson and Lifeways of Canada. Uh, up as a, in the northern part of the park. They found a fish hook and some other evidence of fishing that occurred in, along uh, Malin Creek at its confluence with the Yellowstone River. So that's up in the northern part of the park. That's a famous archaeological site. We talked about it especially. It's one of the older sites. Bear remains at that site also dating back over 9,000 years. So Malin Creek, evidence of fishing. Mummy Cave, also a very important site in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. Uh, yielded evidence of fish bones and fish hooks, a great preservation of organic materials at Mummy Cave, probably the most important archaeological site outside of Obsidian Cliff, uh, anywhere in the Greater Yellowstone ecosystem, super important site, yielded evidence of fishing on the North Fork of the Shoshone River. So we know that Native Americans coming into Yellowstone and the Greater Yellowstone ecosystem were fishing. Uh, it doesn't look like there's much evidence that they were going to Yellowstone Lake to fish, but certainly in the rivers in the Greater Yellowstone ecosystem, it seems like people were um, people were taking advantage of fish when they were presented. So I don't want you to think that Native Americans weren't fishing in Yellowstone. 
um, what we think is that they weren't necessarily fishing a lot um, at Elliston Lake, but it does seem like they were fishing uh, in rivers and creeks in other parts of the greater Yellowstone ecosystem, including within the boundaries of what is today Yellowstone National Park. So there's a lot of early regional studies. I'm just going to highlight two, certainly Mummy Cave we just talked about on the North Fork of the Shoshone River between Yellowstone National Park and Cody. Um, really important site excavated in the 1960s. Uh, Myers Hinman site excavated in the 1970s. That's a site we haven't talked about too much, but it goes back all the way to the late Paleo-Indian period uh, and was used along the Yellowstone River all the way up to the um, to the historic period as well. So that's on the Yellowstone River up by Livingston. Those are two kind of important early studies in the greater Yellowstone region. In terms of uh, Yellowstone National Park, I'd say the first major study was a study of the Yellowstone River. This was done uh, in combination by Lifeways of Canada as well as the Office of the Wyoming State Archaeologist, or OWSA. They identified literally hundreds of archaeological sites stretching from Yellowstone Lake at Fishing Bridge all the way to uh, where uh, the Yellowstone River uh, comes through the northern edge of Yellowstone National Park at Gardner. Um, the key areas where they found archaeological sites were uh, very abundant archaeology in the Hayden Valley, where the University of Montana just finished some work, uh, as well as the Black Canyon of the Yellowstone, which is um, uh, in the area around Malin Creek, that famous site that I just talked about. Um, the most important archaeological sites identified in those 1990s Yellowstone River surveys, the archaeological site at Fishing Bridge at the headwaters of the Yellowstone that I just mentioned and that we've talked repeatedly about in this class. There's dozens of sites all around the headwaters of the Yellowstone River at Yellowstone Lake uh, at that location that's today called Fishing Bridge. Uh, and again, I've reiterated this a couple times in this lecture so far, but the, one of the other important sites in that Black Canyon of the Yellowstone in those 1990s Yellowstone River surveys was certainly the Malin Creek site. And so that has occupations used uh, by Native Americans from the late Paleo-Indian time period, where we had the bear hunting at 9,500 years ago, all the way up to the late prehistoric time period. Um, and of course, it's also uh, an important site because it's one of the two archeological sites that I've talked about as having evidence of fishing. Um, so in the late 2000s, the University of Montana studied the Yellowstone River uh, at uh, Gardner, Montana. We excavated that very old, uh, one of the earliest TP sites, uh, showing evidence that Native Americans were using TPs in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem at the airport's ring site. Uh, we excavated the famous Late Archaic uh, and actually one of the two locations in Yellowstone National Park where Clovis points have been found at the Yellowstone Bank Cash site, uh, as well as dozens of other sites along the Yellowstone River. Um, there, this photograph shows uh, the airport ring site. In the 2010s, we excavated uh, uh, between 10 and 20 sites. I can't even remember how many sites we excavated. It was a really great project that we had. Clear Creek is one of the tributaries that feeds uh, from the Absaroka Mountains into Yellowstone Lake on the northeast shore of Yellowstone Lake. Uh, it, it was an important travel corridor for Native Americans uh, coming from areas like Cody, uh, up the Shoshone River, over the Absorcas to get to, into Yellowstone and Yellowstone Lake. And so there's just a tremendous number of archaeological sites along the Clear Creek, uh, which is a, a big creek that flows into Yellowstone Lake on the northeast shore. Uh, in 2015, the University of Montana did a survey of all the power lines in the University of Montana, and that was fun because a lot of those power lines do follow creek and river corridors, and so we were able to identify lots of archaeological sites, especially around Obsidian Cliff. Obsidian Creek flows right at the base of Obsidian Cliff. Sulfaterra Creek is on the southern end of Obsidian Cliff, and the Gibbon River is a tributary of Sulfaterra that flows down into the Madison River. Um, we also studied the Firehole River, which is around um, Old Faithful and Grand Prismatic Springs over there. Um, in, in that uh, hot springs area of sort of the south central part of the park, east of east of the Madison River, and there's tremendous amount of archaeological sites along those rivers. So the main point of this lecture is that everywhere we've looked for archaeology along rivers and creeks in Yellowstone, certainly Native Americans were using those habitats as great places to live. So what I want to do now is just really run through another project that we did in the 2010s. This was the archaeology of the Snake and Lewis wild and scenic rivers for um, Yellowstone National Park. This was also funded in part um, by the Yellowstone Park Foundation. 
So in 2013, 2014, uh, the Snake Head Headwaters Project Survey was initiated by Yellowstone National Park. Uh, we did archaeological survey on uh, trying to figure out the, the archaeological uh, information associated with the headwaters of the Snake River, as well as the headwaters of the Lewis River, both of which are on the southern, very southern edge of Yellowstone National Park. This shows you a map. Of course, the Snake River flows uh, from its headwaters in Yellowstone National Park uh, through uh, Jackson, Wyoming, through um, uh, the southeastern parts, south central, all the way through Idaho, all the way up into southeastern Washington, eventually reaching the Columbia River at its confluence in Tri-Cities. There's about 72 total river miles that we surveyed uh, of the Snake and Lewis uh, headwaters. Uh, the project setting is uh, really high terraces associated with the Snake River. This is closer to the southern end of the park, near where the park entrance is. Um, we had a lot of uh, weather to, to deal with. This is a part of the park that received lots of lots of rain, especially in the spring. Uh, the Lewis River is a very rugged uh, environment. It was hard to get around. Um, this is the Lewis River Canyon. Uh, the road goes above on the high rim, but we were ducking down into the canyon itself to look for archaeological sites. Uh, this shows you some of the imagery that we found along the Lewis River Canyon. Lewis Falls was an important spot. Um, Lewis River flows out of Lewis Lake, uh, which is a popular campground today. Um, and the survey methodology basically was to identify and document sites. We did this through primarily pedestrian survey, so walking along both edges of the river. We excavated some shovel test pits in, ex in areas where there was very dense vegetation and we couldn't see the ground surface. Um, we were based in Grant Village at the, at, uh, the southern edge of Yellowstone Lake. Um, seasonal access, snow doesn't melt there until May a lot of times, and so we were struggling with uh, when to start the project. Uh, other times it was very difficult to cross the Snake River and the Lewis River, so we had to survey one side or the other depending on access. This shows us eventually we were able to cross the mouth of the Lewis River where it has a con its confluence with the Snake River, um, but it was not until mid-June of 2013 in which we were able to do that. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. This is a very memorable project for our teams from the University of Montana. We completed a survey of 72 total river miles. Found 37 sites, 8 on the Snake River, 29 on the Lewis River. Um, 36 of the sites had pre-contact Native American archaeological sites, and 5 sites had historic artifacts. We found 34 lithic scatters. There weren't very many sites in that, um, in that very steep part of the Lewis Canyon. Uh, we'll talk about two high-density prehistoric site areas, as well as two lithic procurement locations. Um, the steep areas of the Lewis Canyon, again, not very many sites. Um, one of the areas where there were lots of sites was the Snake and Lewis River confluence, as uh, well as Lewis Falls uh, area around where Lewis Lake flows out. There's some beautiful falls there. That was a hot, hot spot for Native American use. Um, we found a Goshen projectile point, one of the oldest projectile points ever found in Yellowstone. Uh, this was sourced to the Teton Pass location. This was found right at Lewis Falls. So this is the Goshen culture, which existed between, say, 10,000 years ago and 10,500 years ago. 11,000 years ago, as, as it says on this slide, is a little old. I should update that. It's been redated. It should be, you know, Goshen is, is one of those um, Folsom Goshen as a, as a culture that came right after Clovis. Um, we've also found lithic procurement locations of kind of poor quality obsidian in the southern part of the park along the Lewis River Valley as well as in, in the Snake, Snake River Valley. Um, and, and many of the uh, artifacts that we found were sourced to those southern sources. Uh, obsidian Cliff wasn't used as much down there. We have lots of evidence of use of, say, Teton Pass, those Jackson Hole sources, but also the local source, which is a Warm Creek obsidian um, and the Conant Tuff obsidian uh, and something called the Pitchstone Plateau obsidian, which is also these uh, kind of mediocre to low quality obsidians in the southern part of Yellowstone were being used uh, in those areas by Native Americans. <laughs> And so prehistoric travel patterns based on those show that people using the Snake River Valley and the Lewis River Valley in the southern portion of Yellowstone were focusing their efforts, focusing their travel and their territories in, 
in um, and along uh, the Snake River down toward Jackson into the Snake River of Idaho. And so it certainly looks like it's probably mostly associated with the Shoshone in that region. Uh, we also studied the Cougar Creek and Madison River. Um, in terms of uh, other research in the future, uh, one of the things we want to figure out is exactly when cutthroat trout arrived at Yellowstone Lake to follow up on the Yellowstone Lake lecture and how it ties into the rivers. Remember that Atlantic and Pacific Creek come uh, and both form uh, where those are the rivers from which the Snake River flows, but also the river, the creeks from which the Yellowstone River flows, that area of the Two Ocean Plateau. We know that fish, the cutthroat trout, migrated through the Snake River to get up to that area. Uh, we're just not exactly sure when that happened. That would be a great avenue of research to study in the future in terms of in fu future river survey projects. I'd like to go to the Two Ocean Plateau. So rivers of Yellowstone were used as travel corridors. Most sites in Yellowstone are either along creeks, tributaries, rivers, or at Yellowstone Lake. Um, they're great avenues for traveling. Today, roads are along those corridors, and certainly fresh water is always important to hunter-gatherers. Um, this lecture went a little longer than I, than I had hoped, but uh, hopefully you get the gist that uh, rivers were just as important uh, to Native American hunter-gatherers of Yellowstone as, as were the lakes.